Hi guys, in the previous video, I showed you how to do drop downs and basically we went about it like this. We clicked in a cell, went over data validation, data validation, picked list, and then we selected a whole column containing data pertaining to that uh, drop down. So, and the reasoning was that if you wish to add further data in future, your drop down would always be up to date. Your drop down would always contain that data. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how not to do drop downs. So I'm going to go here. I'm not going to put input my, in my my car brands this way. I'm just going to go same process, data validation, data validation. I'm going to pick, pick list. And now I'm going to input my data like that, BMW. Now I'm on a German system. So I, have, I would have to separate each entry with a semicolon. Other systems outside Germany use a comma. So BMW, then let me do Ford, then Jaguar, and uh, Opel. Okay, and then OK. So you see, it works perfectly, just like above, no problem. However, updating that is going to be a hassle. Now, updating just one drop down would mean you go the back here, back here, and then you'd have to add a new item, maybe pick where to add it if you want to have your data sorted. Let's say I want to add Ferrari. Oh, Ferrari is like, oh yeah, it's here. It should go here between BMW and Ford. So that's the first thing. Now, we only have here one drop down. What if you build an application which, which has like 10, 20 or 25 drop downs? You want to update all 25 this way? So that's the first problem with that. So basically inputting and uh, yeah, furthermore, many Excel applications, at least the Excel applications I did, uh, are multilingual. So basically you have a, you have a small uh, drop down where you pick the language and all entries uh, um, revert to the chosen language. You couldn't do that here. You couldn't do it this way. So basically inputting data directly in the source works it's perfectly legal but not very practical if you're planning to use drop downs a lot so that's one way of not not building a drop down although it works and it's perfectly legal another way of not building a drop down is again data validation data validation list and this time i have my data listed and i select my destinations like that and okay and it works perfectly but now my problem is what if I add another country what if I say okay you know Australia and New Zealand and Japan and China now you see I just go to Canada Whereas here, this one, oh, it's got them all. It's always up to date. It's got them all. Whereas this one hasn't. Why? Because in this one, let's go data validation, data validation. Let's click here. You see this one just selected this range. Now, this range changed and got bigger. But your drop down doesn't reflect that. So you would have, what you would have to do if you have such a drop down, you would have every time the list changes, you would have to go in here, data validation, list, and then here change those references. Like instead of 10, you got to go now and say, okay, now it's like goes down to 14 and stuff like that. So that's the second way of not doing a, a drop down is basically just selecting a specific range because that's another thing I noticed, especially if you're building Excel applications, which are either for personal use or, or, or worse for, for, for other people, these applications tend to evolve. The data tends to get more. And if you, if you build drop downs with, with, the, with, the, you know, with a specific range, that range is bound to get bigger. And many Excel applications, or at least the Excel applications I did and I saw, most of them have a lot of drop downs, like at least 10 or 20 drop downs for users to select certain parameters. So building dropdowns either this way by 
inputting the data by hand, separated by commas, or this way by using fixed ranges. Both of these uh, ways of building dropdowns are perfectly okay. They give you workable dropdowns, but they are a big hassle of updating. And uh, you don't want you don't want to spend time correcting uh, or, or modifying these drop downs. You see, you want to do the drop down and be done with it. And that's why the method shown in the previous video, where you select the whole column, is the way to go.